Hello and welcome to Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. Uh, we, take your pro we take your questions on this program. Uh, Father Gruner answers them. We have discussions about them. Send us your questions at questions at thefatimacenter.com. You can see the address at the bottom of the screen. Today we're asked about um, when, uh, it's a historical question regarding Fatima, but an important one. Could you please tell me what year or month the Vatican or the Holy Father learned of the request from the, Ho the Blessed Virgin for the consecration of Russia? When did that happen? Well, I don't know if I can give you the month, but I can give you within a, a very close period of time. By August, so the request, the formal request was made on June 13, 1929. That is, the Most Holy Trinity appeared to uh, Sister Lucy. As you know, that uh, as the scripture says, you cannot see God and live. You cannot see the divinity more exactly and live. We, of course, the, those who lived during the time of our Lord on the earth, they saw Jesus Christ, true God, but they saw him in his human nature. But uh, so but the message that is given, which Our Lady says, the moment has come in which God asks. And so she, she, she's talking about the Most Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And uh, so she doesn't just say that to Lucy. She, uh, she appears on June, 20th, uh, June 13th, 1929, and she's standing beside our Lord on the cross. And above Christ is God the Father, receiving the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. So the, as Catholic theology of iconograph, we can depict the Trinity, the distinction of persons, as the closest you can depict on, on, pa on painting or vision the divinity without actually seeing God face to face and mm -hmm. being in heaven dying. So my point being that Our Lady said that in, the pre in everything we do, of course, in the presence of God. But in this case, it's in the, shall we it say, the visual, visual yeah. solemn presence of God. Our Lady says, the moment come which God asks the Holy Father to make. So in answer to the question, what year or month? But well, it wasn't before June 23rd, 1929, because she only got the, the formal request on that day. So she told her confessor, and her confessor had contacts in the Vatican, and the Pope was told before August 31st, 1931. How okay. do we know that? Because our Lord then spoke to Lucy again, saying, given the bishops, given the Pope, more exactly, he says, given my, like, make it known to my ministers, tell my ministers, given they follow, meaning the ministers, so the ministers of God, who are the ministers of God? Well, every priest is a minister of God, but the Pope is a vicar of Christ, so he's certainly a minister of God. And of course, mm -hmm. the message is addressed to the Pope, so make it known to my ministers, given they follow the example of the King of France, in delaying the execution of my command, like the King of France, they will follow him into in misfortune. The King of France was, had his head chopped off for not obeying the command to consecrate France, our Lord is saying, similar misfortune awaits the Pope and his ministers around him, who are also ministers of God, who delay this execution of this command. And so he couldn't say that about the ministers of God if they hadn't known about it mm -hmm. by that time. Fred Michel makes that case in his, in his book, the second volume, I believe it was, it was of his trilogy. So the day of the actual delivery, we don't have anything that we have any record of that he's actually delivered. Maybe we ever get access to the confessor's letters and so forth. I've not seen it. There are, there's lots of records, but I've not seen that one. So, uh, so, so we're concluding then that the Pope would have known by... August 31st, August 31st, 1931. And for Michel, I guess he's had much more time for research than I have. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't have any document, but I know it had to be before that day. Is there any speculation as to why uh, Pius XI didn't act on that immediately? Is that well, there, there's, been, there's been speculation that, uh, you know, it's... Um, the, the popes, you know, like like bishops, like priests, and like lay people, you know, men and women, religious, everybody. The popes are human; they all have their faults, and so uh, uh, not that we don't. In fact, it's defined that the popes are not impeccable, mm -hmm. and you know that that. Uh, and so I think it's in the First Vatican Council what defines the infallibility of the pope, under very restricted conditions. He points out very clearly the Pope is not, not a sinner. He's a sinner like the rest of us. Now, I mean, meaning that, obviously, our Lord says a just man sins seven times a day. So the Pope, the, the story goes that Pope uh, um, um, Pius XI had the opinion that if Our Lady wanted to give a message, she should have appeared to him. That's the way the story <laughs> goes. I don't know how true that story is, but uh, that's the, the but obviously, uh, uh, but Fatima was formally approved in 1930, correct? That's correct, yes. yes. Okay. And, and Pope Bias XI was giving out pictures of, of Our Lady of Fatima even before it was approved mm -hmm. by the local bishop. So, and certainly every pope has approved, and certainly he approved it. 
the message of Fatima, Pius XII, John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul I, John Paul II, uh, Benedict XVI, and Francis, mm -hmm. all of them have approved the message of Fatima. There's eight popes now that have approved it. But none of them have obeyed this command yeah. yet. Well, that's, uh, that's what uh, this apostolate is, uh, a big part of this apostolate is about, is uh, constantly requesting that the consecration be done as, be done as Our Lady requested. So uh, thank you for that, Father. And uh, we'll close this program, and we will see you next time.